night for baseball here in Southern California and a packed house here at Dodger Stadium. Hello again, everybody. With Steve Stone, I'm Harry Carey. And what a pitching matchup. Valenzuela with a 1.20 run average and uh, Sutcliffe with a 1.56. Well, Harry, the Dodgers are leading the National League in runners left on base, so they're not hitting either. We don't have to tell you about the offensive deficiencies of the Cubs, and these two pitchers can put you in a slump. <laughs> We may go about uh, 22 innings, nothing and nothing, the way these guys pitch and the way the respective hitters are hitting. But well, last year, the Cubs had success in this ballpark. They were 4-2 and two against the Dodgers here, so they're looking for a big effort tonight. You know, uh, you can understand why so many ball players prefer to play on the West Coast. That's the beautiful. weather is just ideal. <laughs> it's beautiful. I think when baseball was invented, they invented it to play night games here in Dodger Stadium. All right, we're about ready to play baseball. We'll be back with the lineups now following this. Harry Carey and Steve Stone back at Dodger Stadium. Here are the lineups for the Cubs. Dernier in center field, Sandberg at second, Matthews in left, Moreland in right, Davis the catcher, Say at third, Durham at first, Boa the shortstop, and Sutcliffe, who's won four and lost three with an earned run average of 1.96, the pitcher. With the Dodgers, Sachs at second, Duncan at short, Landro in center, Guerrero at third, Marshall. At in right field, Sosha the catcher, Brock at first, Reynolds in left, and Valenzuela with an earn run average of 1.20 will be the pitcher. The umpires are, you see, Ron C brought the lineup out along with Needham Fewer tonight. The umpire, John McSherry behind the plate, Charlie Williams at first, Randy Marsh at second, Billy Williams at third, and we're ready to play baseball. Hope you'll enjoy it. Bobby Dernier hitting 240 for the year. First pitch, easy pop fly out. Forget about it. One gone. Dernier on the very first pitch. An easy pop fly to Marshall and right. Valenzuela set a major league record when he started this season with 41 and a third innings without an earned run. That breaks the record held by Hooks Wiltsey of the New York Giants back in 1912. You know, his record was three and three when he allowed his first earned run. And that was a home run by Tony Gwynn in the ninth inning that beat him one to nothing. He has really been outstanding. Sandberg the hitter. A little bit wide. Two balls, no strikes. Last year, the Cubs hit four home runs. Sandberg hit two of them in lifetime. There's a drive. That ball just died. Two men away. Sandberg all but hit another one off of him. Ball doesn't carry quite as well at night here. He gets a good piece of this ball and drives R.J. Reynolds back to the wall, but it seems to hang up, and he makes the play. Two up, two down. Here's Gary Matthews. And the pitch a little bit outside. Matthews hitting only 214, three homers, and eight RBI. There's the fastball low. Juan, one of the captains in the press lounge here, wishing a speedy recovery to Carolyn Nuki. Here's ball three outside. From all her relatives, including Juan, who live out here in California. Two out, nobody on. There's a strike after me. The Cravens from South Pasadena. Former Chicagoans are here. Ball four is low, and the Cubs have their first base runner. And here's Keith Moreland. With six, Gary two, Matthews on at first base. Portland. There you see Tommy Lasorda. Next to him is pitching coach. To his left is Ron Paranowski. Monty Basco to his right. Another one of his coaches. Good well wishes to Connie Witt watching the game in Radford, Virginia.
strike a screwball caught the outside corner. Valenzuela is 5'11", 195 pounds. He's got a good screwball. Swan trying to hit the right and he missed out a foot. Friends of Wally Phillips here. Hank Edwards with the group. Pulling for the cup. Owen to the count. Just missed. A little bit low and inside. Strange defensive alignment. With a one and two count now, Kenny Landro has moved over to right center field, thinking Moreland will hit the ball that way. Fouled it out of play on the first base side. Jimmy and Sue Zarante are here on their honeymoon from Chicago Heights. Valenzuela, just 24 years old. Matthews is back. Inside and low. We're here from Cabery, Illinois. Two balls, two strikes, two out, nobody on. One man on. Gary Matthews getting a lead. High fly ball. Short right field, everybody chasing it. And the ball drops. Here's a runner around the third base, going to be held up. A double for Moreland. And that'll bring up Jody Davis. A pump fly that dropped between Marshall and Sachs. Sachs gave it the good run, and Marshall didn't get much of a break on this ball. He comes over, seems to hold up a little bit because he's looking at Steve Sachs. He wants to avoid the collision, and the ball bounds in front of him. Matthews slowed down a little bit between second and third, and that stopped him from scoring. Matthews playing with a gimpy knee. Here's Jody Davis, runners at second and third. Jody, one out of eight against Dodger pitching this year. Hitting only 222 with three homers and nine RBI. Despite the fact that he didn't have a very good San Diego series, he felt that he came out of it a little bit. Jody said that he felt that he swung the bat well, and he's looking to come out of it here in L.A. The pitch by Valenzuela. Swan, and he missed. Strike one. Here's a chance to jump out in front. A base hit would score both men. Owen won the count. Two on, two out. Swung and he missed the screwball a mile. That screwball dips down and away from a right-hand hitter. Fernando has two of them. One he throws about 78 miles an hour. The other one he throws about 62. That was his hard screwball, and when he wants to keep the hitter off balance, he'll float that slow one up there. Runners at second and third. He's got his back to Gary Matthews, who's a runner at third. 0 and 2 the count. Low and outside. Well, he had Moreland 0 and 2, and Moreland wound, wound up running the count to 2 and 2 and getting a hop fly double to right. 1 and 2 the count. Jody Davis digging in. A high pump foul. He had a weak swing at that out of play into the stand. The Mandarinos are here from Sotus, Michigan. One and two the count. Jody Davis. one run a wild pitch and Abel Matthews to score here you watch it again bounce in front of Socia and get away from him one run one hit no errors and nobody left we go to the bottom of the first that comes around in front one to nothing we're W 
Harry Carey back at Dodger Stadium. We're going into the bottom of the first. Here's the run. Here's the wild pitch. This makes it an earned run. Because Valenzuela is responsible for the run scoring. And look at Moreland. I don't know where he, he thought the ball was, but look at Valenzuela's waiting there for him. He was out by 25 feet. Well, the Cubs have run the bases poorly this road trip, and there's an example of it. I know Keith is trying to make something happen. They haven't been swinging the bat, so you're trying to get runs where you can. But he admittedly is not one of the fastest outfielders around. And with Jody Davis up, it was an ill-advised attempt to score. Steve Sox will be leading it off. Now, last year, Rick Sutcliffe, during the course of the regular season, lost only one game, and that was to the Dodgers, right here in this ballpark, when they beat him 7-1. to one. That was the only bad outing he had had that he had all during the season. Here's Steve Sachs, batting 500 against Cubs pitching with four out of eight. Hitting 333 for the year. Fastball is high. Birthday greetings to Ruth Johnson. Watching the game tonight. High ball. Two balls, no strike. Some of the fellows from Sportsman's Corner in Whiting, Indiana are here. Dave Furtak. That's Tom Piklansky's place. Strike call. Larry Mish, Dave Goulis. They're still coming into the ballpark. That's why there's so many empty seats. These seats have been sold. Curve is high, ball three. Gray balls and a strike. Steve Sachs leading it off. Mariano Duncan, the shortstop, is next. The Red Baron delivers right down the middle. Sutcliffe's last outing was brilliant against the Giants on May 9th. Threw a shutout, one to nothing, struck out 12 and walked two. Three twos the situation on the leadoff man. Fouled it out of play. Three balls, two strikes. The reason why getting sacks out at the top of the order is important is that Duncan doesn't hit the ball very well left-handed. He's a switch hitter, much weaker from the left side. You set up the bunt or the hit and run. And give him an opportunity for speed to take over. He walked in ball four. He missed with a curveball. So Sutcliffe starts off walking the leadoff man. Here's Duncan hitting 258 for the year. Donald Cox, formerly of Lombard, Illinois. Now out of Las Vegas, Arnie. There's a throw over the first and runner back. He spends his afternoons watching horse races from all over the country, including Arlington, Arlington Park. Is that your twin brother, Arnie? These are the two fastest Dodgers. Sacks with four stolen bases. Duncan with six. They like to play some hit and run games. Occasionally, Duncan will bunt for a base hit, and he'll try to drag it down first base way. Sacks a good lead. Strike is caught. Owen won the count. Sutcliffe has developed a very slow method of working. I don't think he did that last year until near the end of the season. Owen won the count. The pitch on the way. A little wide. That evens the count. A ball and a strike. Stuart McCall. Formerly of Palatine. Now living in Phoenix. Throw over to first runner back. 1-1 one, one is the count of Mariano Duncan of the Dominican Republic. Again, they throw over there. Hey, he went in standing up, but it was closer than Sachs thought it was going to be. Good move by Sutcliffe. 
Sachs comes very close to being taken off the bag. There goes the runner started then stopped and Duncan trying to hit through the vacated shortstop position foul the ball back one and two the count Duncan can fly hard man to double up there's Joey M. Alfatano coaching at third base Manny Mota is over at first base. And call out on strikes. That's a 45th strikeout of the year. For Sutcliffe. There's Kenny Landro hitting only 175 with three homers, though, and six RBI. One on, one out. Fastball a little bit high. John McSherry working the plate. Might be the biggest weight wise, the biggest umpire in the game. Good umpire, though. Quick throw! Safe on a close run. Where you run into trouble with Landro is when you get behind him because he's a very good mistake hitter. If he knows you have to throw a fastball, he can get a good swing at it. He's been a very weak breaking ball hitter the last couple of years. Now they throw over there, he's back. Vance playing in Chicago, and there's a world of them out here. Don Mulligan with a group. Sacks the lead. Time is called. We've played about a half hour, and there's one out in the bottom of the first. <laughs> now the pitch. Ground ball. Fair ball. Here is Norman coming up with the ball, and Sachs is going to hold it third. Runners at second and third with one out. He grounded the ball right over the bag. He fell behind him, and that was a slider that didn't break very well. When Leon Durham came off the bag, as is his custom with a man at first base, Landro hit the ball behind him. So that one run lead is in jeopardy already and only three men have batted for the Dodgers and they're not supposed to be hitting the outfield plays deep here's Guerrero hitting 271 three homers 13 RBI Dino DeRose from Racine Wisconsin. Hoping to see the Cubs win. Almost a wild pitch, a good save in there by Jody Davis. Good mobility by Jody Davis. It's a slider in the dirt. He gets out there and blocks it with his shin guard, and Sutcliffe knows that Guerrero has been tough on him. Another look at Jody. Guerrero is three for four a lifetime against Sutcliffe, and that goes through a pitcher's mind when he's in a tough situation like this. I just wonder whether the slow, methodical way of working is good for his rhythm or bad. Low. Ball two. I know infielders prefer you to work quickly. They stay on their toes, and the outfielders appreciate it also. But you're right, Harry. Sutcliffe has really slowed it way down, not only here, but most of this season. Two balls, no strikes. 
Guerrero will be swinging if it's good. And there's a drive in the left field. A run will score. Matthews makes the catch. A run will score after the catch. Boy, Guerrero hit a rope. There are two gone. Matthews has some trouble with this ball. It never really gets up above the lights. And that's RBI number 14 for Pedro Guerrero. Here's Mike Marshall now. Marshall hitting 277 with six homers, 16 RBI. Four homers and nine RBIs. Four out of nine, rather, against the Cubs. There's a drive foul. One strike to nothing. He both broke his bat on that one. Randy Schuster from Merrillville, Indiana, originally. Boy, they're from everywhere here at Dodger Stadium. You're watching Chicago Cubs baseball over WGN Channel 9, Chicago, America's number one sports station. The pitch, low and outside. Boy, Guerrero hit a vicious, sinking, low-line drive. Right at Gary Matthews. Curve outside. Sutcliffe wants to make it happen right here because the man in the on-deck circle is the Cub killer, Mike Sosha. Runner at second base. The game is tied. Two men are out. Line drive. Base hit into the corner. Two to one in favor of the Dodgers. Marshall hit a hanging curveball. Sutcliffe is finding his former teammates his biggest nemesis. Sutcliffe has been having trouble with his breaking pitches, and here's one that stayed up right in the middle of the plate for Mike Marshall, RBI number 17. Now watch how slowly he's working. Here's Sosha. He's murder on the Cubs. Curveball at the knees. Strike one. One strike and nothing. The Dodgers have taken a first inning lead two to one. Marshall in scoring position. Slow curve at the knees. Strike two. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Fouled it off. Doubles by Landro and Marshall. Around a walk by Steve Sachs. Have produced two runs. Marshall now hitting 500 against the Cubs. Five out of ten. 0 and 2 the count, and Sosha steps out of the batter's box as Sutcliffe takes so much time. The outfield straight away and deep. Boa right in line with Marshall. Boy, you just see the way Jody Davis set up to the inside part of the plate. And that's exactly where Sutcliffe threw it. Just a little bit inside. Two to one Dodgers. A high pop foul. Out of play. Trying him with another off speed curveball. It looked like it looked as if Socia maybe was looking for that one. But he didn't hit it very well. He just fouled it off.
Cub fans galore here. A million notes. One and two to count. Boa behind the runner. He tapped the foul again. One and two. Kevin speaks formally of Hammond, Indiana. Gary Matthews playing very shallow in left center field. Looks like Sutcliffe is trying to get out Sosha by jamming him, throwing the ball on the inner half. Sosha likes to take the ball to the off field. Eric Besser from Rogers Park, Chicago. On hand. One and two the count. Mike Sosha. Ground ball hit hard. Foul outside first base. Another off-speed curveball. He's thrown him a steady diet of them. Hope he doesn't throw one too many. One and two to count. John Smith with an off-speed pitch. To even the count at two balls, two strikes. The outfield straight away and deep everywhere except left. Mike Sosha digging in. He's hit one homer this year, naturally against the Cubs. That's the one that came in the ninth inning, you know, off Lee Smith with a man on to tie up the ball game of 3 3, and then the Dodgers won it in the tenth inning. That was last week at Wrigley Field. Two balls, two strikes. Just missed, and he's down to three and two. Three balls, two strikes. We're in the bottom of the first inning, the first inning which has lasted better than a half hour already. Three two pitch. There's a long drive. Right center field, Dernier cutting in under the ball, and he makes the catch to retire the side. Two runs, two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of one, the Dodgers out in front, two to one. Harry Carey with Steve Stone. We go in the top of the second. Jody Davis will be leading it off now. Cubs trailing two to one. There's a drive like a bullet in the left field, a big hit. Jody Davis starts his second with a single to left. One of the reasons I was a little disappointed with Moreland trying to score, Harry, was Davis has a 385 lifetime average against Valenzuela. And sometimes you got to let the man who's swinging the hot bat get a chance to knock in the run. Here's Ron Shea getting a fine hand. Say brought up the lineups. He served as the captain tonight. Hitting only 183, and he is anxious to start moving that average upwards. He's had four homers, 11 RBIs. Well, we've had a highly advertised pitching duel between two outstanding hurlers <laughs> but neither one has had as good stuff yet tonight and that often happens strong and he missed the screwball a mile despite the fact that Valenzuela has had great success against the National League he hasn't had that good a success against the Cubs he's four and five lifetime his ERA is up over four runs a game, which is quite unusual for the talented left-hander. Runner at first base, nobody out. Good fastball on the outside corner of the knee. And Say is behind on the count, one and two. Leon Durham on deck. The Penguin is due for one. There's a high pop foul weekly hit into the stand. And the count. One and two. 
Penguin is going to have to alter his stroke against Valenzuela. If you try to pull that screwball, you hit a ground ball to the left side. And in this case, it's going to be two. The best thing to hit a screwball is to go with it and take it to right center field. Toronto edged the Angels six to five tonight. Kansas City again beat Baltimore. There's a pop foul out of play. Detroit beat Texas. We're waiting for the White Sox score to be shown up there. Runner at first base. Nobody out. Two to one, the Dodgers are leading. A little low. And the count evens up two balls, two strikes. Leon Durham on deck. Those empty seats are slowly but surely filling up. 2 2 delivery. Stroud came out. Say goes on swinging. You're beginning to wonder about say whether it's going to be that kind of a year. Here is Durham. That's the first strikeout for Valenzuela. Durham hitting 236. Three homers and 12 RBI. Fastball moves him away from the plate. Jody Davis, the runner at first. A little tap back to the mound. Hey, the ball takes a funny ball. Everybody is safe. As Valenzuela was coming off the mound to feel the ball, it took a freaky. He kind of backed up on him. Now watch this. His aggressiveness works against him. He charges this ball in a hurry, and then the ball takes an abrupt left turn away from him, and it's a base hit for Durham. It looked like the ball saw a detour sign. <laughs> An infield hit. And here's Larry Boa now with runners at first and second and one out. Boa looking for his first run batted in this year, hitting 235. Strike on the outside corner. Boa, switch hitter, a better hitter right handed than he is left handed. And he's hitting right handed against Valenzuela. Reynolds playing a very shallow in yeah. left field, and that's dangerous. Larry has some pop right handed. Swung, and he missed to the foot. A screwball breaking down and away from him. Durham with a scratch hit at first. Jody Davis with a line drive hit at second. One away, 0-2 on Boa. There's the screwball low and away. Wasted that one. One and two the count. Bo a big number one on the back of his Cub uniform. Rick Sutcliffe, a good hitting pitcher, is next. Ground ball looks like a double play. Out at second, but the throw was wide. And Sachs had to come off the bag. So it's merely a force out. They're now two away. The Dodgers have 40 airs this year, and their defense has been sloppy most of the season. Here's a perfect double play ball. Guerrero has some bad footwork to start with, trips over his feet, and then throws poorly to Sachs, and he's got to get out of the way of Durham for self preservation. Here's Sutcliffe, first and third. They're motioning to the first baseman, Greg Brock, to play halfway. Bow at first, Jody Davis at third. Here's Valenzuela with a two to one lead. There's a base hit for Sutcliffe, tying up the ball game. Sutcliffe rips a single to center, driving in Jody Davis. 
Sutcliffe was right on top of home plate, daring Valenzuela to throw the fastball by him. You can see it right down the middle. It's low, and Sutcliffe goes down and gets it and drives it right back at him. And so here's Bobby Dernier now. Well, that's how a pitcher can help himself. That's Sutcliffe's fifth hit of the year. And his second run batted in. The other one, he drove in with a homer. There's a strike off. 2-2 Two -two tie. Boa, good lead. There's a ball, but he's going to beat it out without a play. The bases are loaded. Funny thing, Steve, we were talking about that earlier. Why he doesn't do that more often, I'll never know with his speed. And now he has set the table for Ryan Sandberg. Especially with a left-handed pitcher on the mound in Guerrero, not known to be the greatest glove at third base. It seems to me like they're giving him the base hit most of the time. That time he took advantage of it. And now Sandberg, who hits the ball very well against Valenzuela, has a chance to put the Cubs on top. 2-2 two -two is the score. The Cubs have had five hits and two runs in two innings. The Dodgers have had two hits and a walk and two runs in one inning. So the low and outside of screwball. So the highly advertised pitching duel has not come about. Strike called over the outside corner. He started a swing, changed his mind, and it was in there. A ball and a strike. Bases are jammed. Two men are out. Now he's in the hole. He went after the screwball, which broke low. There you see 24-year-old Fernando Valenzuela. Brian Bidwell, son of Starmy, watching the game. One and two the count. Almost threw it away. Two balls, two strikes. Sandberg trying to put the Cubs out, out in front. Ball high. Everybody will be running with a pitch now. Three balls, two strikes. Bases loaded, two out, the game tied, two and two. That's a whole story in a nutshell. The full count pitch. Listen to Cub Band. Ball four forces in a run. So Larry Boas crossed the plate. Three to two in favor of the Cubs. And here is pitching coach Ron Paranowski coming out. Gary Matthews walked in the first inning and scored the first run of the ball game. After a double by Moreland and then a wild pitch. Here's Gary Matthews. Cubs leading by a run. A base hit now would make things look pretty good. The way this game is going, what bothers me is the Dodgers bat last. They're, <laughs> they're at home. To hit Valenzuela, you have to make him get the screwball up. If you make him throw strikes, he is hittable. Hey, Sutcliffe <laughs> broke down the line trying to get Valenzuela to balk. Oh, foul tip, strike one. One strike or nothing. They gave him all a right field to hit through. They squared around towards the left. That evens a count, a ball and a strike. Three to two, the Cubs are leading. This is the confidence that Tommy Lacerda has in Valenzuela. Nobody up in the Dodger bullpen yet. The pitch. Ground ball, but to the sharp stop, he's got it. Hey, fumble it! Everybody is safe! And a run is in! 
He was going to one hand the ball and step on the bag, but he didn't hold the ball. It flopped out of his glove. Four to two now. We talked about the shaky defense of the Dodgers. That's air number 41. They lead the National League in that department. Here's an easy play. It just eats up Duncan, and the Cubs still have something going. Sutcliffe across the plate. It's four to two now, and here's Moreland with the bases loaded. Way wide, ball one. Still nobody warming up. The way Lasorda figures, it's the best he's got, and he's going to go for nine. One ball, no strikes. Ball two is low and outside. Valenzuela. He usually has good. Now they start to stir in the bullpen for the Dodgers. Two balls, no strikes. Moreland will be swinging if the pitch is good. Ball three. Just the ninth man to bat in the inning. Three balls, no strikes. Make him throw two strikes. Carlos Diaz and Tom Brennan up, and everybody in the Dodger infield out to talk with Valenzuela, trying to kill some time. Bullpen slow in getting up, and Valenzuela seems to have lost his composure out there this inning. He's really allowed the air and some bad pitches to bother him. Four to two, the Cubs are leading. Three nothing pitch. There's a strike. Three and one. Keith Moreland looking for that big hit. Bases loaded. We walk him, forcing in another run. Holy cow, I haven't seen Valenzuela look as bad as ever. And now, five to two, and here's Jody Davis, who started it all. You want to know why most managers have gray hair? not necessarily an age correlation. It's looking out at your best starting pitcher walking two runs in in the same inning. Here's Jody Davis. Swings and he fouls it off. One strike and nothing. John Vukovic coaching at first base scoops it up. Jody Davis lined a single a left to start the second inning. It seems like hours ago. The Cubs have scored four, still have the bases loaded with two out. The pit. Swung and a screwball missed to the mound. The tenth man to bat in the inning. The pick. Fouled it out of play. John and Craig Hollenbeck from Malarkey in Phoenix. Valenzuela had only walked 16 men in 60 innings coming into this one. And he's walked three already, two with the bases loaded. On that last foul ball, Jody Davis busted his bat. Comes over for a new war club. The Cubs five runs on five hits. A nightmare of an inning for Valenzuela. Now ready. Ground ball hit a double great play by Guerrero. Robbing Jody Davis of a hit. That ball came up for him. Four run score in the inning. There were four hits. One error and three men left. We go to the bottom of the second. The Cubs five, Dodgers two. <laughs> Harry Carey back at Dodgers Stadium. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Cubs are leading five to two. Scoring five runs on five hits. 
the Dodgers two runs on two hits and they committed a very costly mistake error. Sometimes it's easier said than done but for Rick Sutcliffe he just has to relax in this ballpark. He lost here last year and it looks like he's trying to impress his former team so much that he just gets a little bit tight in this park. He came out and walked the leadoff man. That's really not like Sutcliffe. And it seems to me if he just let the ball go speeded up his pace a little bit I think that he'd have a lot more success. Here's Greg Bach hitting 205. Dave Franson and Charlie Gutzell. Charlie being the brother of Mary Gutzell. Works for the Cubs. The pitch to Brock. Strike call. They're here from Peoria. Friends of Pete Von Anka. Rich Hepick. Roger Gerken. Linda Beckman. There's a pitch low. Brock has suffered to, through two sprained elbows this year. They've kept him out of a lot of action, but he's reclaimed first base. The Dodgers giving him every opportunity to live up to the potential that he had when he came up from Albuquerque. The one, one pitch. There's a drive. Going to be caught. Moreland at the warning track, and he has it. Brock lines hard to Moreland. That ball was really kissed. One out. Here's R.J. Reynolds, the left fielder, hitting 220. Don Zimmer, Tom Lasorda, and Lafitte Pinkay. Both of those guys have won and lost a lot of money on Lafitte. Lafitte riding in Hollywood Park. No wonder Arnie showed it. <laughs> he brought it. Bet on the jockey tomorrow, Arnie. Forget about the horse. One out, nobody on. R.J. Reynolds, the batter. Arnie, tell him we put him on national television tonight. Maybe he'll give you a tip. He did. He told him to go to Atlanta and stay away from Hollywood Park. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes. One out, nobody on. Barbara Rachel is here from Balboa. A bit low. Ball three. Boy, he is struggling. Ordinarily, you can fly runs. You can. It's like money in the bank with uh, Sutcliffe pitching. But he's all over the place. Look how slowly he's working. Strike called it to me. Three balls and a strike. Line drive, base hit in the left field. He's going to get two out of this. He's on his way to second, and he makes it slider. Reynolds lines a double to left. His first hit of the year against the Cubs. Reynolds was hitting 220 coming in, and 220 hitters become 320 hitters if you have to make enough three and one pitches. It was a three and one fastball. He sliced it to left field, and then the wheels took over. The third double of the night for the Dodgers. Here's a good hitting pitcher coming out. Valenzuela. He's had three hits this year. One of them a double. One out. A man in scoring position. There's Sutcliffe whirling as if to throw, but didn't. Five to two, the Cubs are leading. This game is one hour old. We're in the bottom of the second. Ah, inside, ball one. Fernando Valenzuela, 5'11", 180 pounds, just 24 years old. High fastball, ball two. Rick Sutcliffe. Trying for his fifth victory of the year. There's a strike call. Two balls and a strike. He wants a new baseball. You think he'd ask for the new baseball when he threw the two balls. Now he just got a strike. And he's thrown the strike ball out of play and he doesn't like this one either. Well see Harry that was a curveball ball. Now he knows he's got to throw a fastball so he's got to ask for the fastball ball. 
<laughs> you sure talk funny, you know. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. He foul tips it back. Yeah, I told you the fastball ball. It was easy. And yeah, Valenzuela swung at a ball, ball, ball over his head. <laughs> Two balls, two strikes. Long lead by R.J. Reynolds. A high towering fly ball will be caught. Bobby Dernier is there. Two gone. Valenzuela flies out. That'll bring up Steve Sachs. Kevin and Susie White from Joliet are here tonight. Mark Masick from Elgin, Mike Jaeger, Jaeger from Joliet, Terry Masak from Moline, all pulling for the cup. Two out, a runner in scoring position. Cubs are leading five to two. Max takes a curve in the first strike call. Roger Galley from Aurora, Illinois here. One strike and nothing, two out. Sutcliffe has developed this very, very slow method of pitching. High pop foul out of play. He's ahead of him on the count. Oh, and two. Jake Jacobs, who used to work at Channel 7 in, in Chicago, now working out here in Hollywood. He used to always tell him he belonged in Hollywood. Oh, and two the count. Bouncing ball, Sandberg will throw him out. And that retires the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. At the end of two, Cubs are leading five to two. Ladies and gentlemen, there's. With Steve Stone, Harry Carey back at Dodgers Stadium going to the top of the third. Ron Sayu fanned his first time, swings and misses the first pitch. There's a pitch of the low. Bill Kwasniewski with his son Craig cheering for the Cubs. There's a line drive right to Guerrero. Say hit that ball right on the nose, but Guerrero made a glove hand stab. Pedro's had three chances, and two of them he's done well. Taking a base hit away from Ron Say, and he really saved the Dodgers last inning with a fine play on Jody Davis. Leonard, Larry, and Mike are here from Arlington Heights. There you see the Red Baron. Sutcliffe, Jody Davis to his left. Here's Durham, who had a scratch hit in that big second inning. Bill Vasilidis from Las Vegas here. He's in the hole, one and two. Wow, one back to the screen. Oh, another guy from Las Vegas. What's going on here? Russ Anderson. Strike. That's a second strikeout for Valenzuela. Here's Larry Boa. Two out, nobody on. Five to two, the Cubs are out in front. Curveball, he's sharpened up as if he were going to bump the curve was high. 
Winnie Kenny from Dalton. Dalton. And Wayne Feldman from Schaumburg. Here's a pitch outside. Two balls, no strikes, two out, nobody on. Larry Boa, the hitter. Every day he plays now, Larry adds to, breaks his own record for most games at shortstop. Two balls and a strike. Fouled at that. Dick Lees with his family from Bellevue, Nebraska. And they're here from United, Dave Laudensky and Rich Vincenti, North Lake. He didn't mean to swing a little dribbler down the first base line, and it's fair. And Larry didn't run. He was hoping it would go foul, and Brock steps on the bag. One, two, three, nothing on draws. Bottom of the third coming up with the Cubs out in front, five to two. Harry Carey back at Dodgers Stadium. The official Chicago Cubs gift catalog. All new in 1985 is now available. More than 100 unique gift items are offered in this beautiful gift catalog. There are official Cubs jerseys, jackets, caps, t-shirts, golf sweaters, and much, much more. To order your gift catalog, send one dollar to Cubs gift catalog, Wrigley Field. West Addison Street, Chicago, 60613. Your $1 will be credited to your order. So remember, the official Chicago Cubs gift catalog is now available. To order your catalog, send $1 to Cubs gift catalog, Wrigley Field, West Addison Street, Chicago, 60613. Duncan takes a strike off. That one dollar you send in will be credited to, to your order. Duncan is so similar to Larry Boa as a switch hitter. Right-handed, he has some pop in the bat, but left-handed, he just tries to wave at the ball, use his speed, slap the ball on the ground, and make the most of his legs. Five to two, the Cubs are leading. Sutcliffe delivered. Fouled it back. Mariano Duncan hitting 258. He was out on strikes his first time. Friday, May the 24th, will be sunglasses day at Wrigley Field. Stuck him out, a curve over the inside corner. Duncan is arguing about it. Strikeout number two for Sutcliffe. And that was Duncan both times. Here's Landro, double to right, his first time at that. There's a pitch a little high. Remember, the key to facing Ken Landro is to not fall behind. That's when he becomes a dangerous hitter, and he's really struggled this year. No sense letting him up. He was 175 coming into this game. Now the pitch. And he takes a strike off. May 24th is a Friday. Houston will be in town. And it'll be sunglasses day at Wrigley Field. Every adult 14 years of age and over will receive a handsome pair of Chicago Cubs sunglasses as they enter the park. Compliments of Bud Light. We'll make your plans now to be on hand for Bud Light's sunglasses day. <laughs> Friday, May the 24th. High pop fly. That'll be easy. Sandberg is there. Two men are out. Here, Comes out in front five to two. The Herons are here from Portland, Oregon. Tony 
Sammy Almeida is here from Aurora, Illinois. Two out here, Guerrero. Now the pitch. Curveball, low. Guerrero drove in their first run with a sacrifice fly in the first inning. There's a strike, a curveball. Hey, they're here from Prophetstown, Illinois. Tom Pierce. A ball and a strike. Curve a little bit low and outside. Doby and Ski, South Siders from LA are here. Two balls and a strike, two out. Foul Tipton. They're here from Mendota, Illinois, the Sognacs. Boy, we have a lot of Cup fans here from all over tonight. Good well wishes to Carolyn Yuki from her relatives here in Southern California. Two balls, two strikes. A little tap foul. Sutcliffe dipped sidearm for the first time tonight, and sometimes the element of surprise works. Guerrero hadn't seen one. Guerrero's been very tough against Sutcliffe, so he's pulling everything out of the bag. Now the 2 2 delivery. Ball three is low and outside. <laughs> Frank and Phyllis DeLeo of Dana Point, Naperville, Illinois. Formerly of Naperville here. The 3 2 pitch. Ground ball. Say's got it. Throws in time. And there's the first 1 2 3 inning against the Dodgers. Nothing across. This is Harry Carey doing stats and becoming along to join Steve in a moment. The score at the end of three. Cubs 5, Dodgers 2. Join the new Blue Crew fan club. Co sponsored by the Dodgers. Steve Stone along with Dwayne Stats to take you through the middle. How are you everyone tonight? Could you believe that Valenzuela walked two runs in in the second inning? That's uncharacteristic. Well, one of the uh, few times you'll probably ever see that out of him in his career. Sutcliffe looks at a breaking ball for a strike. Rick single drove in a run in the second inning. Cubs on top five to two. Venezuela misses down. Cubs five runs on five hits. Dodgers two runs on three hits. They've committed an error and it was a costly one. Mariano Duncan booted one with the bases loaded. Two of the runs off Valenzuela are unearned. One and one count to Sutcliffe. Basketball crowds him. Two and one count. Cubs had a couple things that helped him in that big inning that four run second that little scratch hit by Durham Sutcliffe kept it alive with a base hit driving in a run and then that wild streak by Valenzuela Fernando with three walks and two strikeouts through three innings fouled off The way the hitting has gone, Steve, it only stands to reason that the Cubs would score five runs against a guy who has an earned run average of 120. As difficult as runs have been to get. 2 2 count on Sutcliffe. Valenzuela misses, so the count goes full. At the end of two periods, Edmonton is on top of the Hawks, 7 to 4. Hawks led briefly in that game, and Edmonton's power is taking over. Ball four. Walk number four by Valenzuela. 
Robbie Dernier steps up. He's one for two. Singled and scored a run in the second inning. Flied out to Mike Marshall in the first. Well, it continues to be a very strange outing for Valenzuela when he walks the opposing pitcher. Although it is Sutcliffe and he has to be careful to him. To walk the bases loaded. Forcing in runs. And then walking the pitcher. Valenzuela has to be careful, Dwayne, because he's going to his face while he's straddling the mound, and he's going to his face with his pitching hand. Jim Fry should alert umpire John McSherry about that. That's a ball. Dernier takes a strike. Sutcliffe at first. Nobody out here in the Cub fourth. R.J. Reynolds playing Dernier very shallow in left field. He's playing him very similar to the way he played Larry Boa. And both of these guys are capable of generating some power to left field. Reynolds could get burned. Ball two. Fans here trying to generate a wave. But they can't seem to get up the enthusiasm. There are too many Cub fans interspersed among the crowd here at Dodger Stadium, and they won't go for it. Brennan and Diaz up in the bullpen once again for the Dodgers. Fouled off to the right. Count goes to two and two. Well, through Valenzuela's first five starts, the Dodgers scored him a total of eight runs. They got him too early, but he gave him back in the second. Foul ball sliced off into the stand. So the count holds it 2 2. Well, it's been more of the same for Valenzuela this year. I think last year, in over half of his starts, I think in 18 of the games in which he pitched, they scored him two runs or less. And he made only 34 starts, so that was better than half his starts. Strike three. They're near knew it and just walks on back. I say only 34 starts. That's in context to the number of times the Dodgers got him and he runs. There's nothing wrong with 34 starts this day and age. He had a good year despite the fact he was 12 and 17 last year. He had a fine 303 ERA. The glaring statistic 261 innings pitched. He only gave up 218 hits while striking out 240. It was a fine year, but his ball club had a bad one, and so did he. Sandberg looks at a breaking ball for a strike. Rhino walked and drove in a run in the second inning. And flied out deep to R.J. Reynolds in the first. His strikeout and walk totals were both up last year as well. They were career highest for him. Slice fair in the right field. Sutcliffe on his way to third. Sandberg on his way to second. Just out of the reach of Greg Brock. And the pitch outside. Sandberg reaching for it. Got it just out of the reach of Brock. That pitch was a good foot off the plate. Well, some things hold up. And one of the things that holds up is good lifetime averages against certain pitchers. Sandberg hitting 333 lifetime against Valenzuela. Matthews hitting 346, Moreland 391, and Davis 385. Those hitters hitting 2, 3, 4, and 5 in the lineup. That makes for a rough evening for Mr. Valenzuela, and the Cubs are continuing along those lines here tonight. Gary Matthews has reached base twice, but he doesn't have a hit. He walked and scored a run in the first inning, and he was safe on an error by Duncan in the second. One out, two on. Valenzuela misses low and away. Cubs on top, five to two, and threatening to add to their lead. Ball two. Dodgers have that infield in. Fly ball, center field. Landro calling, Marshall calling, now Landro takes it. Here comes Sutcliffe. He's going to store. The play is to third. 
Out at third, the run counts. John McSherry motioning the home plate that Sutcliffe had scored ahead of the throw. Sandberg out at third. So a sacrifice fly for Gary Matthews. The Cubs get a run on one hit. They don't leave anybody. And at the end of three and a half, it's the Cubs six and the Dodgers two. This has been an unusual game on the bases for the Cubs. Now let's assume that Sandberg is much faster than Sutcliffe, which he is. This throw is cut off by Duncan. Sutcliffe scores. I have a hard time understanding how a throw cut off can find Sandberg out at third base if Sutcliffe obviously does score, and he does, because John McSherry was watching the play very closely to make sure that Sutcliffe beat Sandberg. Well, there it is. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> it happened. Cubs won't quarrel. They get a run. Lead by four. Some unusual base running tonight. Keith Moreland trying to score all the way from second base on a wild pitch was thrown out easily. You're watching exciting Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN Television, Channel 9, Chicago. America's number one sports station. Mike Marshall leads off against Rick Sutcliffe. Marshall doubled in a run in the second inning. Marshall now is three for six, lifetime against Sutcliffe. Steve, so want to say hello to Lori Hahn, who is watching from the hospital in Arizona, and we wish her speedy recovery. She's a big Cub fan. We ran into her grandmother here last night. Good fastball over the outside corner, strike one. Marshall didn't like the call, and he questions John McSherry. Mike Marshall, raised in Buffalo Grove, 6'5", 220 pounds, now lives in Los Angeles. Sidearm fastball, strike two. One of the things Marshall has been able to do that, for an example, Brock hasn't been able to do as a hitter is, is use the whole field. He's very good to right center field. He has a lot of power up that way and the Dodgers would like to see the left handed hitting Brock go to left center field as much as Marshall does right center field. Oh and two count on Marshall. Sutcliffe misses high. Well that's a way to combat the outside pitch. If you try to pull the outside pitch the average is going to be down in about the 230s or 40s, and Brock has struggled since he came into the league. Marshall is just starting to flower. He looks like he's only going to get better. Good breaking pitch, strike three. But not on that pitch. Tough pitch by Sutcliffe. Mike Sochi. We'll take another look. That pitch will give a lot of hitters headaches. Oh, I talk about completely fooled. He was out on the front foot, had nothing left in the swing. He figures as long as I was out there, I might as well swing at it. Mike Sosha comes up. He flied out to Bobby Dernier to end the first inning. Looks at one down for ball one. Sosha coming back from a severe rotator cuff injury, decided not to have surgery. And he's made it all the way back. Jim Fry has to like what he's seen of the offense thus far. Ball two. Cubs on top six to two. One out in the Dodger fourth. Ball three. Greg Brock on deck. Despite the fact that he's struggling, he is a home run threat. Fastball over the outside corner, strike one. Sosha hit 273 last year. He did hit five home runs. Ball four, Sosha's aboard. And Greg Brock, who flied deep to Keith Moreland in the second inning, steps up. He hit the ball right on the nose. In 
the third period Edmonton now on top eight to four over the Hawks. Ball one down. Leon Durham playing behind Mike Sosha at first base. He's not a stolen base threat. And Brock is a dead pull hitter, so he wants to get an angle on the ground ball. Ball two, and now Jody Davis wants to have a word with Sutcliffe. He came off a brilliant effort against the Giants, and he's been struggling tonight, Dwayne. Yeah, that was after uh, working with Billy Connors on that slider and his delivery. You know, Connors had him do a little exercise working on the backside of the mound. Uh, Connors thought that his his left leg was a little lazy and if he worked uphill that he'd get a better feel for that that front foot hitting the ground early and get a much better feel and it apparently paid off in his outing against San Francisco. Two and oh count to Brock. Ball three. Well if he does walk Brock I'd like to see Billy Connors come out and have a word with Sutcliffe just to settle him down. Strike one. R.J. Reynolds in the on deck circle. And I would assume that if the Dodgers keep it going, they will pinch hit for Valenzuela, despite the fact that he is a good hitting pitcher. Foul back. Brock had a good cut. Well, Sutcliffe to this point has done what he is capable of doing after falling behind. He's worked back and now has a full count on Brock. Let's see what he does with him here. 3-2 pitch. Long drive right field. It looks like it's curving foul. Well, he got it all but just got the head of the bat out a little too quickly. Greg Brock was both a hero and a goat in the Pittsburgh series. In the Sunday game he hit a home run to win it. But in the Friday night game he made two errors in the 12th inning that enabled the Pirates to beat the Dodgers. So it's been an up and down year and an up and down career for Greg Brock. 3-2 pitch. For the appeal to Billy Williams, he says no. And the Dodgers have runners at first and second, only one out. Well, now we're seeing the unusual side of Sutcliffe's performance by walking two hitters in a row. Here's another look. Comes one of the appeal on this high delivery that Brock started to go, and did he go or not? What do you think? Well, that's close. Well, Billy Williams said he didn't. That's what counts at this point as R.J. Reynolds steps up. And now Jim Fry comes out from the dugout. So he's not entrusting it to Billy Connors. He wants to have a word with the big right hander himself. Well, Sutcliffe is down near the bottom of the batting order with R.J. Reynolds to up. Reynolds, a switch hitter, a much better right handed hitter than he is left handed. And the Dodgers have sent Terry Whitfield into the on deck circle. Jim Fry has gotten across what he wanted to to Sutcliffe. And Rick is in a jam here in the fourth. A jam of his own making. Seems to me when he really slows down, he's not quite sure of himself. He had a good inning in the third inning, a one, two, three inning, and he was working quickly. When he gets a man on, he goes into that real deliberate motion. Throw to second. He's back safely, and Larry Boa makes a pretty good play picking it out of the dirt. The pitch was low for a ball. Reynolds just wants to make Sutcliffe throw a strike. He faked as if to bunt on the first pitch, but he was taking all the way. There's the strike. The count's even at 1 1. Gary Matthews very shallow and toward the line in left field. They're near shallow and over toward left center field. And Keith Moreland straight, straight away right. Fouled off. Dodgers making no secret over the fact that they would like a center fielder. And Al Campanis, the general manager, has gone around talking to a lot of the other GMs. 
Right now a lot of teams talking trades around baseball. One and two count on R.J. Reynolds. Strike three, swung at a bad pitch. Terry Whitfield is going to hit for Valenzuela. Your attention, please. For the Dodgers, batting for the pitcher Valenzuela, number 45. Whitfield this Terry year Whitfield. as a pinch hitter has been devastating. That 382 average is combined, but as a pinch hitter, he's 6 for 10 with one home run and four RBIs. Overall, the Dodger bench has been good. That Pinch hitting crew at 339 for the year while their team average is only at 233. Line drive center field base hit. The near charges gets the ball back in. And Whitfield delivers his seventh pinch hit. Well, there's the pitch. He got it up. And Whitfield, a veteran hitter, you can't make a mistake to Whitfield like that and expect to get him out. So after coming back to get R.J. Reynolds, he gave up the base hit to Whitfield. Cubs now lead six to three. And the walks have gotten Sutcliffe in trouble. He walked Steve Sachs to lead off the first inning, and Sachs scored. He walked Sosha up second here in the fourth inning, and he scored. So two of the three Dodger runs scored via the base on balls and now Steve Sachs who along with that walk grounded to Sandberg in the second inning. Dodger runners on first and third Cubs lead six to three there's two outs here in the Dodger fourth. Fastball misses. No activity as of yet in the Cub bullpen. Looks like Carlos Diaz still throwing for the Dodgers. Breaking ball strike. Count evens at 1 1. They play sacks around toward right. Big gap in left center field for Steve. Gary Matthews, shallow, straight away left. Ball two. Sutcliffe really struggling here in the fourth. down 3-1. So they'll have a tendency to look for the hard stuff. Mariano Duncan on deck. 3-1 and one count to Sachs. Strike two. Infield back. This is going to make the force out at second a little bit more difficult as Terry Whitfield is going to be going on the pitch. High ball right field. Here comes Moreland. on this ball but he makes up for it by making a tremendous catch he went sliding through the outfield and right and he saves the day for the Cubs at the end of four it's the Cubs six and the Dodgers three on the mound for the Dodgers to start the fifth inning Carlos Diaz Diaz is making his 11th appearance he is 2 and 0 oh. With no saves, nine hits, and a little better than 14 innings, 14 strikeouts, and five walks. And this will be the third time the Cubs have seen him. Diaz came over from the New York Mets to fill the void in the bullpen created when Steve Howe went down. Now Howe is back, and Diaz is having a pretty good year. Keith Moreland steps up. Moreland's one for one. Doubled in the first, walked in the second, 
forced in a run. And he looks at a fastball missing inside. Good fastball for a strike. The Dodgers have a big Spanish speaking network. Jaime Harin, who's been here for 27 years, says they've got 3 million listeners in the Los Angeles area. Screwball misses. The Dodgers are on 42 stations all over Mexico. And they started broadcasting to Mexico in 1981. Do you think it's a coincidence that Valenzuela came up the same year? <laughs> Two and one count on Moreland. Foul back. The Cubs hit only five home runs against the Dodgers in 1984. Three of them by Ryan Sandberg. Two two count on Keith Moreland. Diaz misses outside. Last year Diaz split his year between Los Angeles and Albuquerque. Numbers weren't too good at either place. 549 ERA up here, 447 in Albuquerque. Ball four. The fifth walk issued by Dodger pitching tonight. Valenzuela threw four innings. He gave up six runs, four of them earned. On six hits, he walked four and struck out three. Jody Davis who's hit the ball hard twice steps up he singled and scored a run in the second and was robbed of a bases loaded single by Pedro Guerrero in the second inning also when he hit as the tenth man to come to bat for the Cubs. Breaking ball misses. Diaz is the sort of pitcher who has to have command of his pitches that screwball has to be just right for him he's not going to overpower anyone he's up around the mid 80s or so in the velocity department and after a walk and the first pitch of a ball if you're a hitter you've got to look fastball especially after a conference this is a good pitch to send Moreland breaking ball misses. 2 0 count on Jody Davis. Gives you an idea of what kind of confident factor the Dodgers may have in Diaz fastball. They keep calling that breaking ball. He throws a curveball and a screwball and a sinking fastball. 2 0 pitch. Popped up. Steve Sachs calling for it. And he makes the play. One out here in the Cub fifth and Ron Say steps up. He's 0 for 2. Struck out swinging in the second inning and then hit a rocket right at Pedro Guerrero in the third. Penguin in a deep slump. Hitting below 180. You know, it'd give him a lot of personal satisfaction to break out of that while the Cubs are in here. Jim Fry and Dallas Green wrestling with a nasty situation at shortstop. A lot of rumors flying around Chicago that Sean Dunstan will be sent down. Jim Fry says no decision has been made yet, but he's been meeting with regularity with Dallas Green here on this trip. Breaking ball for a strike. Price says that if they do decide to send Dunstan down he would split the shortstop role between Boa and Spire to see who might be able to get hot perhaps playing Boa against left handed pitchers Spire against the right handers but this is a tough situation for Dunstan. Oh and two what well, do you think should be done. Well I, I think they should send him down myself. I think he should go to triple A ball and they should spend uh, as much time as they can working on basic fundamentals and just take a very basic approach to playing shortstop if they want him to play shortstop at some time in the major leagues. He's a great kid and a tremendous athlete very gifted just not quite ready yet. Strike three. 
Jose swings at a bad pitch and he goes down on strikes for the second time. And Dwayne, I agree with you 100%. I don't believe that he knows fundamentals quite yet. I think that he dominated every league he was in before AAA. And he really hasn't learned how to play the game on the fundamental level. I think they've got to send him down, get a coach working with him every day to get him to learn how to both hit and field the fundamental way and then let his natural talent take over. But right now he's really pressing. It's been a tough road trip for him and a tough road trip for everyone concerned. And Fry has to think of not only Sean Dunstan but the team at this point. Two out and Leon Durham steps up with Keith Moreland at first. And a breaking ball misses inside. Well, Steve, if the team had been hitting, maybe they could have gone with him, and they may still. I mean, we're not at this point making any decisions for anybody. One and one. But it would uh, it would have been a much easier situation for him had the team hit well, and then perhaps things would work out differently. But for the long haul, I think he needs to. To do exactly as you said, spend some time, basic fundamentals, and a lot of time just uh, getting a very solid approach to playing shortstop. Strike two. Well, early in the season, he was making some errors, and he was winning some games with his legs. And Jim Fry says the errors were well timed because they weren't hurting the ball club. But now, in tight games, when the team isn't producing a lot of runs, the errors have hurt a little bit. The last thing Fry wants to do is get him so down on his confidence that when he does come back. He brings the reminders of the first two weeks of the season with him. One and two count. There goes Moreland. Long fly right field. Marshall way back. He's back to the wall and he makes the play. So the Cubs leave one and at the end of four and a half it's the Cubs six and the Dodgers three. Here's a clinic for all you youngsters. When you go back to the wall, you've got a feel for it. You can see the right arm of Marshall extended. He wants to make sure that he's not any closer. And after feeling for the wall, he locates the ball and puts it away. Mariano Duncan steps up. He struck out twice, looking both times. Ron Say in very close at third base, taking the bunt away. But Duncan likes to drag the butt, so Durham will have to be heads up at first. There's the butt. Foul. As I'm sure you mentioned he uh, just started switch hitting a couple of years ago and still a little weak from the left side, but Manny Mota is very pleased with uh, his ability to bunt the ball. Amazing story. He was just an average runner. Then he had arthroscopic surgery on his knee and he came back and he could fly. Suggest a few of our players visit his doctor. <laughs> One strike pitch. Good breaking ball for strike two. You know, it's almost like the will I be able to play the piano story? <laughs> if Arnie's son is watching, there's hope for you. He's just recovering from knee surgery himself. to Billy Williams but he says no Duncan did not go around so the counts at one and two Cubs on top six to three in the Dodger half of the fifth inning now the year after that surgery I think he swiped 56 bases in the minor leagues strike three It's a tough way to go trying to learn switch hitting against Rick Sutcliffe on a pitch like that. Well he wasn't supposed to be here. The reason why Duncan is here is that Steve Sachs hurt himself in the last last exhibition game. Duncan was physically at Albuquerque waiting to open the season for the Dukes and then got a call the night before to report to Houston. So it's trial by ordeal for the youngster up in the major leagues. Ken Landro doubled and scored a run in the first inning popped up to Sandberg in the third. He looks at a curveball inside. Here's a guy, Manny Mota, would love to see hit the ball the other way a little bit more. Take advantage of his speed and the whole field. But more times than not, he'll be trying to pull the ball. Ball two. He did hit the ball the other way when he had his great years with Minnesota. He came up with California Angels, went to Minnesota, and was a feared hitter in the American League. But something's happened to him, Dwayne, and I don't know what it is. Maybe he hit a few home runs and styled himself as a pull hitter, but now he's really struggling. 
The more he tries to pull, the worse the average becomes. Fouled off to the right. He's really struggled here at Dodger Stadium. He's hitting less than 100 at home. If you're just joining us, Fernando Valenzuela started this one. They pinch hit for him in the fourth. He gave up six runs, four of them earned. Sutcliffe misses, and the count goes to three and one. Valenzuela did not have his good stuff tonight, and he had no control walking in two runs in the second inning. Three one pitch. Fly ball center field. This one's easy. Bobby Dernier right there and makes the play. So two up and two down. And that'll bring up Pedro Guerrero. Pedro Guerrero. Guerrero came up many years ago with the Cleveland Indians. Got to their minor league system. Never saw a day in the Indians uniform in the major leagues. And came over here to the Dodgers. And has been some hitter for the Dodgers. But they would love to play him in the outfield. Due to circumstances, he's playing at third base. Fastball misses high, ball one. And the way you can hit, you're going to play him somewhere. Ball two. Guerrero and Keith Moreland both one game winning RBI behind Keith Hernandez of the Mets. Guerrero and Moreland with four. Hernandez ever the clutch hitter leading the league once again in that department. Fouled back in a good cut by Guerrero. He had a good pitch to hit. It was up from Sutcliffe. And Guerrero just didn't make contact solidly enough fortunately for the Cubs and Sutcliffe. Midway in the third period Edmonton continues to increase their lead. It's now nine to four. Strike two. Two and two with two outs. Cubs on top six to three in the Dodger half of the fifth inning. Mike Marshall on deck. There's a good look at Rick Sutcliffe. It was a struggle tonight, but he's on top. He hit him. Dropped down sidearm and threw the ball behind him. So Guerrero winds up at first base, and that'll give Mike Marshall a chance. Here's a look at the hit by pitch as Guerrero starts to duck it and it gets him on that left arm. Just above the elbow on the outside part of the arm. That's the third time that Guerrero has been hit and he leads the club in that painful department. Mike Marshall one for two. Looks at a breaking ball down. Marshall doubled in a run in the first inning and struck out swinging on a good sidearm curveball in the fourth. Sutcliffe falls behind once again 2 0. Marshall playing with a very, very painful foot. He fouled a ball off it and then sprained his ankle. They didn't know if he'd be able to play tonight, but he's in there. Yeah, he hurt it Saturday and did not play Sunday. Of course, yesterday was an off day. Good fastball. Count goes to two and one. Marshall with great power to all fields. His natural power alley is right center field. Unusual for a right-hander. Strike two. Marshall leading this club in RBIs with 17, leading the team in home runs with six. He's second in the league behind Dale Murphy in that department. 
two and two pitch. There goes Guerrero. Pitch is high. Throw to second. Never get him. Stolen base, Guerrero. Guerrero's in there with time to spare. That's his first steal against the Cubs this year. The Dodgers are two out of three against the Cubs in that department this year. Well, he guessed right. He picked a breaking ball for his fourth stolen base of the year. Count full on Marshall. Ball four. Two men on, two men out. And Mike Sosha steps up. Sosha flight out to Bob Dernier in the first inning. And drew a walk and scored a run in the fourth. Well, Sutcliffe has thrown 108 pitches so far. Ground ball right at Boa. He'll go the easy way to second. Just barely forcing Marshall, who was hustling. And so the Dodgers leave two. No hits. And at the end of five, it's the Cubs three and the Dodge Cubs six and the Dodgers three. Steve Stone along with Dwayne Stats in the sixth inning with the Cubs on top six to three and Larry Boa leading off. He's 0 for 2. Bounced into a force play in the second, but he scored a run and grounded out. Greg Brock unassisted in the third. Carlos Diaz on the mound replacing Fernando Valenzuela. Line drive left field base hit. Larry hit that ball with authority. Rick Sutcliffe. And Rick Sutcliffe steps up. Undoubtedly against a left hander he'll be asked to sacrifice. And with Guerrero charging hard at third base it's a good time to bunt it down the first baseline. This Dodger defense has committed 41 errors this year and they lead the league in that department. Out to Diaz. He looks to second. No play. Only play to first base, so the sacrifice is accomplished. And that one will go 1 4 if you're keeping score. Center fielder, Bobby Dernier. Bobby Dernier steps up. He's 1 for 3. Light out to Marshall. Singled in the second. And struck out looking in the fourth inning. That was the first sacrifice bunt for Sutcliffe this year. In his first attempt at sacrificing. Larry Bow at second base, one out here in the Cubs six. Breaking ball strike one. Cubs had good luck in this park last year. They were four and two against the Dodgers in Los Angeles. Seven and five overall. Diaz whirls, but nobody's covering. Good breaking ball for strike two. If you take away that strike shortened year of 1981, the Cubs won the season series last year for the first time against the Dodgers since 1972. It's hard to believe that. They haven't been able to take him since then, but that's what it says. 0-2 count on Dernier. Play it second. Oh, it just back. There you can see it. Watch the leg. It's in just ahead of the tag. Three, throw to second. Dernier goes down on strikes for the second time. Second baseman, Ryan Sandberg. Then Ryan Sandberg steps up. That's amazing how Socha unloads the ball coming back from that rotator problem he had. 
a little conversation there with John McSherry. I think Sosha's talking to him about interference on the part of Bob Dernier. When Sosha came out to throw the ball, Sosha says that Dernier interfered with him, but Bobby was leaning over to try to hit the breaking ball, and McSherry said it was not intentional. It didn't obstruct your throw in any way, and let's go back and take another look at it. Right he had to throw is. around Bobby Dernier. Nice shot, Arnie. Sandberg is one for two. Doubled in the fourth inning. Walked and drove in a run in the second. Good curveball for strike one. Diaz has a curveball. He throws at two different speeds. And it's a good one. He's kept the Cubs off balance with it thus far. He's going more with that breaking pitch, the curveball here in this inning, than he is the screwball. Over the outside corner for strike two. Larry Boa leads away at second. Two outs here in the Cubs six. Cubs on top six to three. That last pitch is about as close as Diaz wants to get with his fastball. He'll nip the corners and then try to get the breaking ball to the screwball. Feel pretty much straight away for Ryan Sandberg. Breaking ball misses. Nice play by Mike Sosha, who has really improved himself defensively. He's as close to the Dodgers have to a leader. He's not a very vocal guy, but he goes out there, does his job every day. He's a pretty tough kid. And a couple of the writers here in L.A. said if he was a little more vociferous he would really be a leader on this ball club breaking ball misses so the counts two and two with two outs here in the Cubs six when Diaz gets ahead of a hitter it's breaking ball all the way Sandberg fights off the screwball and that was a pretty good piece of hitting because after looking at a lot of curveballs that screwball going away from you is a tough pitch and he was just able to foul it off. Here it is it starts to break the other way against the right handed batter Sandberg and Ryan just got a bat on the ball to stay alive. After the screwball it's a good opportunity right here for Sandberg to look for that off speed breaking ball and if he gets it he could drive it in the left field. The pattern of Diaz thus far has been to follow up something away with something off speed and inside. Let's see how he works it. Top to the right side. In comes Sachs. Close at first base, but he gets him. So the Cubs get a leadoff single by Boa, but they leave him. And at the end of five and a half, it's the Cubs six and the Dodgers three. to lead off the sixth inning for the Dodgers. It'll be Brock, Reynolds, and a pinch hitter for Diaz. Rick Sutcliffe has given up only four hits through five, but he's really struggled with his control, and as Dwayne mentioned before, the pitches are really starting to pile up. Yeah, 109 pitches through five innings. Well, he got off to that rocky first inning. He threw 30 pitches alone in the first inning. Brock lined out to Moreland in the second inning, drew a base on balls in the fourth. Breaking ball misses, ball one. Bullpen is busy for the Cubs. Keith Moreland goes over. Makes a fine running catch. Greg Brock hit it right on the nose, and Keith Moreland ran it down. And Moreland on his horse, and he makes the catch. Moreland turned in that great play earlier tonight. He went sliding through the outfield and right. 
Ahmed was to end the fourth inning, and he opens the bottom of the sixth with a nice running catch. Jody Davis has said, when people talk about how slow he is, he goes, I know I'm slow, but there's one guy that I can outrun, and that's Keith Moreland. Moreland says, I know that I've got to be the slowest running outfielder in the National League, but if I get my glove on it, I'll catch it. And he has shown that tonight. R.J. Reynolds steps up. He doubled in the second inning and struck out swinging in the fourth. Looks at a breaking ball down. You'd look for a quick inning if you were Sutcliffe here. You want to keep your pitches to a minimum. Fastball strike. He loves to complete the games he starts. And the Dodgers have their, their bullpen busy. Tom Brennan is the right-hander. Looks like Steve Howe is the left-hander. One and one count to Reynolds. Ground ball right at Sandberg. Safe at first. He bobbled the ball. And he's charged with an air. Here it is. He just couldn't get the handle on the ball. Into the glove, okay, but he just couldn't find the handle. And by the time he finally did, the throw to Durham was too late. The pinch hitter is Bobby Baylor. Attention, please. For the Dodgers, betting for the pitcher Diaz. Number 21, Bob Baylor. Baylor has not pinch hit yet this year. He has one hit in 19 at bats. That a single. The Sandberg had some problems. He let that ball play him. And when it happened, you can't juggle the ball against R.J. Reynolds. He runs too well. So Reynolds at first with one out here in the sixth. And Sutcliffe evens the count at 1-1. One, one. Baylor a fine utility player over the years. He's a slap hitter. He's had trouble staying healthy here with the Dodgers. Fastball over the outside corner. Strike two. For a moment, it appeared that Setcliffe might get that quick inning he was looking for, but the error has changed that around. Reynolds might be running, was sort of wanting to stay out of the double play, even though he's three runs down. Setcliffe keeping him close. Reynolds had some leg problems earlier this year, was on the disabled list, came off on April 23rd, had a hamstring problem. Now he looks to be completely healthy because he was flying down the line on that bobble by Sandberg. 2 2 pitch. There he goes. Fouled off. Reynolds had a good jump away from first. Quick start over there. Well, John Cusack is in town. Star of the sure thing. A great Cub fan. Just wanted to pass along best wishes to his friends back in Evanston. Count holds at 2 2. Ground ball fouled on the third baseline. Joey Amalfitano coaching at third for the Dodgers. Manny Moda coaching at first. And if there's a better man to instruct you on pinch hitting in this game, I don't know who he is. Manny Moda, one of the all time greats in that department. One out here in the Dodgers six. Sutcliffe figures if he has Reynolds dive back a few times, maybe it'll slow him down just a step. Sutcliffe trying to make Reynolds as tired as he is. <laughs> he hasn't thrown as many pitches. <laughs> this is a good opportunity to strike him out and throw him out. I think Reynolds is going to be going once again. He held last pitch. Baylor a tough man to strike out. 
There goes Reynolds. Slice down to say fair ball. He bobbles it. Baylor's going to be aboard. That's got to go as a base hit. Baylor's going to get a base hit out of this. Say was back at third. He came charging in. Ball wouldn't stay in the webbing of the glove. It would have been a very close play at first. And Baylor gets a base hit. And Sutcliffe gets a visit from Jim Pryor. And the Dodgers are now two for two in the pinch hitting department. So when that ball was chopped to Sandberg by Reynolds, it looked like the Red Baron was going to get out of it with an easy inning. But that wasn't meant to be. So now the Dodgers have runners at first and second and only one out. And they're threatening as Steve Sachs steps up. Sachs 0 for 2 tonight. Walked and scored a run in the first inning, bounded to Sandberg in the second, and flied out to Keith Marlin in the fourth. George Fraser up in the bullpen for the Cubs. Sachs is a good high fastball hitter. Usually drives the ball to right center field. Bobby Dernier shading him toward right center. Fastball misses. Ball one. Breaking ball over the outside corner. Cubs lead six to three, but the Dodgers have something going. Two men on, one out here in the sixth. Mariano Duncan on deck. Ground ball. Boa stays back on it. Only play to first. Gets him at first. Good play by Larry Boa. Baylor hustling down the line to second made the force out impossible. Here's where the cool head of the veteran, the experienced shortstop, really makes itself evident. He had only one play by the time that bounding ball got to him, and that was to whip it to first to get the speedy sack. That's a good observation, Dwayne, because he looked at second just out of the corner of his eye and then fired the ball to first. And he really got something on the throw. Two out here in the sixth. Sutcliffe has fanned Mariano Duncan three times, twice called and once swinging. And he is not above bunting for a base hit here. Two outs, runners at second and third. Cubs lead six to three. Ground ball to Boa. Cubs should be out of it. Fires to first. That's it. Dodgers get a base hit and a walk, and they leave two. Harry will be joining me for the seventh, eighth, and ninth. Dwayne, it's been a pleasure. At the end of six full innings, it's the Cubs six and the Dodgers three. With Steve Stone, Harry Carey back at Dodgers Stadium. What a, what a ball game. This looks like the Fats and the Lumbagos playing. It's an extravaganza, Harry. And Tom Brennan's coming into this. So with everything we've had, now we've got the gray flamingo. He's one and three with a 6'11 ERA, making his ninth appearance. The Cubs saw him in a starting role in Wrigley Field. Four of those nine appearances have been starts. In 28 innings, he's given up 33 hits, struck out 14, walked 10 and given up 19 earned runs. And he'll be asked to keep the Cubs right here as the Dodgers are three runs down. Gary Matthews, who drove in a run with a fly ball in the fourth inning, will be leading it off. Six to three, the Cubs are leading. Scott Rosenwald here pulling for the Cubs. When did the Fats and the Lumbagos play? <laughs> that used to be a... All the old timers used to play <laughs> in St. Louis. Helen and France Durante are here, and the Maliks, Ted and Millie from Chicago. The Cubs are leading. Here's a pitch in the first strike. Matthews try to check his swing. What was that again, Arnie? Edmonton beat the Hawks 10 to 5. They lead three games to two. There's a line shot to center, a base hit. Matthews opens his seventh. 
with a single to center. You know, I'll bet you at least half of this crowd are Cub fans. Here we're going to have a runner coming out for Gary Matthews, and it's uh, Gary Woods. Woods running for Matthews. He'll also replace him as a defensive move in left field. Well, you're right, Harry. I still don't think that knee is 100% yet. The Sarge just hobbling a little bit. Here's Ball, and he's walked twice. Gary Woods. Now the stretch. Throw to first, the runner back. Six to three, Chicago leading. And Moreland trying to go to the opposite field, fouls it off. Tom Brennan, no relation to our Andy Frame. Man at the press box level at Wrigley Field. This Tom Brennan is considerably older. Woods a short lead. He bunts. He's got a chance to beat it out. It will be a hit. Guerrero could not pick it up cleanly. Marlin does that well. Boy, if he had the speed of a Dernier or a Sandberg, he might hit 400. Taking advantage of the Dodger defense, he lays one down. He surprises Guerrero, whose only play is the bare hand pickup. It's do or die on this. Either you come up with it and fire in one motion, or you're done. And Moreland gets a base hit. Despite the two hits tonight, Moreland's major contribution has been with that glove. He's been outstanding in right field. So with runners at first and second and nobody out, here's Jody Davis. Davis, one out of three. So far tonight, he opened the second inning with a line single to left, and that started a four-run rally for the Cubs. Here's Brennan getting ready. Jody Davis hitting 226. He tried to bunt, and he bunts it foul back. And a funny base baseball is such a thoroughly unpredictable game. That is the very essence of its great charm. Here's two of the greatest pitchers in baseball, Valenzuela and Sutcliffe, starting tonight. Everybody's figuring it's going to be a one to nothing, 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 maybe, until ad infinitum. And neither man has any has his stuff at all. Sutcliffe has lasted longer, but he's been struggling every inning. Jody Davis swings and he misses. You're watching Chicago Cubs baseball over WGN Channel 9, Chicago, America's number one sports station. No matter what Roy Firestone says. <laughs> he's gone. Oh, and to the count. Is that... Uh, Cusack, the, the fine young actor, with a fine young hat. Those movie stars follow you around, Steve. <laughs> Here's a curve outside. <laughs> Get a little more concerned. One ball, two strikes. I'm just looking for the blonde in the sure thing. He told me he's going to fix me up with her. If I were him, I'd take care of myself first. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Six to three, Cubs were in the seventh. The pitch. Strong came out. And Jody Davis goes down swinging. Here is a fellow who's due. Ron Say, 0 for 3 tonight. Struck out twice. Hit the ball hard one time, but right at the third base. They post the average up on the board below his picture here. And I'd sue these people. That 177 stands out like a sore thumb with 45,000 people looking at it. You can always tell people that that's what you weigh. One out. 
Brennan's fit. Swung and he fouled it back. Boy, he hung a breaking ball right in the wheelhouse that time. But when you're slumping, you don't hit those pitches and he fouled it back. They're here from Hanover Park, Illinois tonight. Linda and Chris Bullock. Now ready. Cubs could use a few more runs. A little bit inside. And Socia cocked the arm, ready to throw to first. However, Brock was not covering. Now ready. We're in the top of the seventh. The one-one delivery. Popped it up on the infield. Duncan goes out, makes the catch. First baseman, Leon Durham. Boy, I've heard of slumps, but this is getting ridiculous. Now Tommy, Tommy Lasorda. Lasorda coming out. Excuse I think he wants to <clears throat> make a change right here. If I were him, I'd go to Steve Howe because Brennan, although he's got decent enough stuff against right-handers, is really victimized by left-handers. Howe has been warming up in the bullpen, and I look for him to make a change. Yep, they're going to make a change here, and we'll be back following this. Gary back at Dodger Stadium and here's Steve Howe coming in. Despite the fact that he struggled this year he threw against the Cubs in Wrigley Field and looked pretty good in two innings. Howe this year 0 and 1 with an 844 ERA making his eighth appearance. He's got two saves. In five and a third innings he's given up six hits and five runs. Struck out four and walked two. There's Leon Durham. The way this game is going the Cubs could use a few more runs. And the fastball is low and inside. Steve Howe appearing in his eighth game. Pitched a total of only five and a third inning. Low ball two. Larry Bow on deck. Two balls, no strikes. The bull will be jumping on this if it's good. Strike and fastball at the knee. Howe was battling back from his enforced layoff due to drug rehabilitation. Then he blew out his elbow in winter ball. Had an operation to reroute the nerve. And now he's trying to come back from that. And he's still a pretty good looking pitcher. A little tab off the pitcher's glove. It's going to be close at first base. Safe! An infield hit. And the ball hustling down that line. How deflected it. Made it an even tougher play for Sachs. The deflection off the glove is what got Leon in at first base. It slows down the ball just enough for the bull to beat it out. That's two infield hits for the bull. And two infield hits this inning for the Cubs. And now here's Boa with the bases loaded, looking for his first run batted in of the year. Steve Howe out of Pontiac, Michigan, went to the University of Michigan. Six footer. Bases loaded. Two out. Comes now with 10 hits. They haven't exactly uh, all been hard hits, but you'll take them. Out throws a good low slider, and so Gary Woods will have to be alive at third base in case it goes in the dirt. There it is, a base hit up the middle. One run is in. Another man trying to score will make it. A big hit for Larry Boa, driving in his first runs of the year. 
And that makes it eight to three now. And that should do it. How the fortunes of this season have turned. Larry Boa coming through with a big base hit. Nothing cheap about that hit. A line drive up the middle. So Moreland followed Gary Woods across the plate. Here's Sutcliffe. He sacrificed last time. He walked and scored in the fourth. He single driving in a run and later scored in the second. He's had a busy, busy night. There's a pitch a little bit low. So the scratch hit, fill the bases, and Larry Boa drove in the two run. Two balls, no strikes. Brennan is charged with both those runs. 50,191 here today, of which 48,187 paid. As a ground ball hit to the shortstop. Hey, close, but he's out at second base. From Duncan to sack. Larry Boa thought he had beaten the play. Two runs, four hits, no errors, and two left. We go to the bottom of the seventh. The Cubs now leading eight to three. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for the tradition. For off, center fielder. Ken With Steve Stone, Harry Carey back at Dodger Stadium. As we go now into the bottom of the seventh, Ken Landro will lead it off. Gary Woods now playing left field. They're here from Steamboat Springs, Colorado. The pitch to Lando. Strike call over the outside corner. How many pitches do you think Sutcliffe has made tonight? I think he's probably at the 125 pitch mark right now. On his way to about 160 or 70 if Fry lets him complete this one. Now the wind up the delivery. Popped it up. In foul territory, round save, got room. Makes the catch, one out. Tugboat Saloon. Tugboat Saloon and Eatery, Ski Time Square, Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Tugboat Saloon. Nice, <laughs> nice name. That sounds pretty good, huh? Sounds like something out of a movie. Where a guy walks into the saloon and says, I'm Rod Carew. One out, nobody on. Here's Guerrero. And it's, did he go around? No. They appeal, and Charlie Williams, the first base umpire, said no, he didn't swing. A long ball game. Going on to three hours. We're in the bottom of the seventh. White Sox won their game two to one today. One out, two balls, no strikes. One of the reasons why the Dodgers had such a bad year last year was the National League East. They were 27 and 45 against the East. They just couldn't handle the pitching. There's a drive hit like a bullet in the left field. Woods going over, comes up with the ball. Guerrero will have to hold with a long single. That ball was really creamed. That's only the sixth hit off Sutton. Somehow that, that doesn't seem possible because there have been so many base runners on. Here's Marshall with one out. Double play ball to say he's got it over to second one over to first double play and the inning is over around the horn five four three. And at the end of seven now the Cubs still lead eight to three. Danley does. 
Harry Carey back at Dodgers Stadium. <clears throat> We're ready to go with Bobby Dernier. And Howe's first pitch. Fastball over the outside corner. Eight to three, the Cubs lead. Boy, oh boy, the Denver Nuggets playing at the Forum, where the Lakers are invincible. Even up the series by beating the Lakers tonight by 22 points, 136 to 114. Bobby Dernier beat out a bunt. He's one out of four. Struck out his last two times up. Look out. Spun him around. One and two to count. Those are the fans heading for home. If there's a fight in the stands, it'll be all Cub fans. I know that. High pop foul back and out of play. There were 50,000 here a few minutes ago. But there are about 40,000 empty seats <laughs> now. That'll give you an idea. Hey, do they bring blankets out here? Captain foul. One and two. It gets cold here at night. It drops down to about 60. <laughs> Scott Sanderson tomorrow night against a left-hander, Rick Honeycutt. We'll be on at 9.30 Chicago time. I pop foul back, out of play. Well, well, well past midnight in Chicago. And just about at the stroke of midnight, the Dodgers turned into pumpkins. When Larry Boa drove in the two extra runs in that seventh inning, which makes it now a five run lead. A little bit low. Two balls, two strikes. Dernier, who's five out of 14 for the year against Dodger pitching. 2 2 delivery. Struck him out for the third time in a row for Dernier. Second baseman, Ron Sandberg. Here's Sandberg. He's one out of three, drove in a run with a walk. Sandberg in the first inning hit a drive that looked as, as if it were going to easily clear the left field wall. But Reynolds went up against the wall and hauled it down easily. There's the strike. Comes about hit him 11 to 6, each team with an error. That evens a count of ball and a strike. Steve Howe out of the University of Michigan. A little bit low and inside. The way he's throwing, it's obvious his arm is all right. He came up with the Dodgers originally in 1980. Low. He had only 13 games of minor league experience when they brought him up. He was in the World Series in 81. Bouncing ball. Guerrero one hands and throws in time. Good play. Pedro Guerrero. Charging in made a fine play. This is one of the things he does well at third base. He comes in and gets the ball very well. Doesn't wait for the short hop and the good transfer from glove to throwing hand gets it over there to nip a speedy Sandberg. Two men are gone. Here's Gary Woods. He ran for Matthews in the seventh. So this is first time at bat. Although he has scored a run. Steve Howell, the two runs 
But the Cubs scored in the seventh with charge to Tom Brennan, even though the two telling hits came off Howell. A little tap towards third. Guerrero will throw him out. And it's one, two, three. Nothing across. Bottom of the eighth coming up. The Cubs leading eight to three. We go on to the eighth inning. The Dodger has Sosha, who's nothing out of two today. Will lead it off. Sutcliffe has gone all the way. Fastball a little bit low. One ball, no strikes. Those extra two runs that Larry Boa batted in, his first RBIs of the year, had to take a lot of heart out of the Dodgers. A ball and a strike. Bouncing ball foul. Well, it's amazing how quickly they empty this place. There's the there are the cars on their way out of here. What a beautiful plant. I think you could you could eat your dinner right off the floor. That's how meticulously clean it is. Donger Stadium. The two two pitch. High pop fly. Who's going to get it? Gary Woods will. Sosha pops to Woods. One out. First Here's Brock. These kids hit two balls right on the nose tonight. Both were hauled in by Moreland. Moreland made a remarkably fine play in the fourth inning with a couple men on base robbing Steve Sachs in what could have been a very damaging inning. As it was, the Dodgers scored only one run out of it all. One ball, no strikes. Brock waiting. That evens the count. High pump foul back and out of play. Charlie Hudson. Hudson pitched the Phillies to a 7-1 victory over the Reds. Giants down Pittsburgh 3-1. The Mets knocked off Atlanta 3-1. Houston shut out Montreal 10-0. San Diego beat the Cardinals 6-2. Those are the National League games. There's a smash right to Durham. He's got it. Pitcher covering. Two away. Left fielder, R.J. Reynolds. In the American League, Toronto knocked off the Angels 6-3. And the White Sox moved to within the game of California by beating Cleveland 2-1. Oakland knocked off Milwaukee 6-3. The Yankees came from behind and beat Minnesota again 10-7. Detroit over Texas 4-1. And Kansas City beat Baltimore again. Five to three, Seattle blank, Boston five to nothing. You were talking about Ron Davis, and every time you looked up, he gave up a game-winning homer. He did again yesterday. Yeah, but not tonight. <laughs> they didn't put him in tonight. <laughs> Two men are out. R.J. Reynolds swings, pops it up. An easy inning for Sutcliffe. Larry Boa waiting. One, two, three, nothing across. At the end of eight, the Cubs are leading eight to three. <laughs> Harry Carey back at Dodgers Stadium. Here's Moreland on the first pitch. Lines the ball hard right at Reynolds. One gone. Catcher, That's the first time Jody that Davis. Moreland has been retired. He had walked twice and he'd had two hits. So he winds up two out of three. Here's Jody Davis. 
One out of four for the day. Steve Howe in his third inning of relief. One strike and nothing. The Cubs will remain two games behind the Mets. In a virtual tie with Montreal. This will even out their road trip of three and three and put them seven above 500 again. If they can hold them in the ninth. Jody Davis waiting. Ground ball. Mariano. Nice play. Throws. Good play. Two up, two down. How after giving up. That scratch hit to Durham, and the two-run single of Boa has now retired six in a row. Duncan was shifted from second base to shortstop, and he's made the adjustment well. He did make a costly error tonight, but he's still in the learning process at the major league level, and he's going to be a good one. He's got great hands. Here's Say. Ron Say has fanned twice, popped up once, and hit the ball hard to the third baseman. 0 for 4. His average right now, they showed up on the board with his picture, is 175. A little bit low and inside. See, this is the difference between veterans and rookies. A rookie would couldn't possibly stay in the lineup, hitting only 175. But a veteran, they know what his what his norm is, and they know sooner or later he'll bring his average up to where it always is. Or they assume that he will. Three balls, no strike. Two men are out. Steve Howe. Handsome young man. Right down the middle. Three and one. Howe is only 27. High pop foul back and out of play. At age 27, if he's got his personal problems behind him, no reason why he shouldn't go on to have a, a great career. That's one of the reasons why the Dodgers have shown great patience. Left-handed short relievers are like gold. 3-2 pitch. Struck him out again. Oh, boy. One, two, three, nothing across. We go into the bottom of the ninth. Cubs are leading eight to three. Carry and Steve Stone as we go into the bottom of the ninth. Bill Russell's going to be the pinch hitter. Hitting 324, and like all their pinch hitters, he's three for seven in a pinch hitting role. They've had good success in that department. He's batting for Steve Howe, and the first pitch is in the first strike off. One strike and nothing. Sutcliffe going for his fifth victory of the year. Russell takes it low. Sutcliffe the shooting for his fourth complete game of the young season. Dodgers lead the league in men left on base. They average seven and a half, and tonight they're right above their average. They've left eight so far. Now the pit. Tap foul. Eight to three, the Cubs are leading. He didn't mean to do it. A little tap in front of the plate. 
but first they hit in foul territory they rule and it's just a foul strike I don't know many guys in this ball club that could have completed this one here he's probably at the 155 pitch mark right now and still has something on his pitches. Two and two the count. <laughs> Bill Russell. Fouls it back. Curveball is just just missed with it. Eckersley has four complete games. Sutcliffe is going for his fourth. Three and two the count on Bill Russell. Bouncing ball foul down the third baseline. Three balls, two strikes. Valenzuela leads the National League with five complete games. There's a drive foul into the left field corner. <laughs> Bill Russell threw his bat at the ball that time. This ball game is better than three hours old. Eight to three in favor of the Cubs. Sutcliffe's pitch. There's a smash. One hopper. Bull has got it over to first. Easy out. One away. And here's Steve Sachs. Steve Sachs. I bet you Sutcliffe won't go dancing tonight. <laughs> Boy, he's, a, he's pitched a long ball game. He's been on base all night long. He's, had to run the bases. He has scored two runs. He's batted one in. He's had a hit. Can probably stick his whole body in a tub of ice when this is over. There's a pitch smash right back. He makes the, smash, the stop and flips over to first base. He caught that ball in self-defense. Twinkle toes Sutcliffe. This ball looks like it's going through the middle. Watch this defensive play. It's a rocket back up the middle. Look at that. He almost stuck his glove between his legs to catch that ball. It's been quite a night for Sutcliffe. Now if he goes home and fixes the plumbing in his room he will have had a complete evening. Come on. Oh, it tells the Cubs fan <laughs> don't have bad plumbing. Number zero. Two out. Al You're thinking of your apartment. <laughs> Two men out. Nobody on. Al Oliver's the pinch hitter. Strike over the outside corner. Well, this is the way I like to see Oliver come up. Two out, nobody on, and the Cubs leading eight to three. Curveball a little bit inside, a ball and a strike. You know, Harry, in the sixth inning with two men on, he let Duncan hit for himself, and he grounded out to go 0 for four. You would think there'd have been a pinch hitter in the sixth. A bouncing ball, Sandberg should throw him out. Cubs win. Cubs win the first game at Dodger Stadium in 1985. And now the congratulations are on the mound. Look at the Red Baron. He's got to be tired. 3.03 is the time. The Cubs are now even at 500 on the road trip. And the final 8-3 to will be back with the totals in a moment. Steve Stone, Harry Carey back at Dodgers Stadium. Man, this was an interminable ball, ball game. Three hours and three minutes, and it seemed longer. Uh, Sutcliffe still had great stuff. 
he must have made 200 pitches, and he's still strong enough to finish. Well, he saved his best pitching for the end. He had a good eighth and ninth inning, but he can credit Keith Moreland with two fine catches in right field to get him off the hook. And the Cubs picked a good night to come alive offensively against Fernando Valenzuela. The best laid plans of mice and men often go astray. Here's this great classic pitching duel. Valenzuela versus Sutcliffe. One guy's out after four innings and the other guy's struggling through nine. Well, you look up at the board, Harry, and Sutcliffe threw a six hitter, but it was a deceiving <laughs> six hitter because it seemed like the Dodgers had men on the bases all night long. All right, go get your rest now. We you got to be back tomorrow night. <laughs> okay, I'll see you then. All right. Here are the totals quickly. Eight runs, 11 hits, one air for the Chicago Cubs. Sutcliffe is fourth complete game. He is now five and three for the year. For the Dodgers, three runs, six hits, and one error. The losers, Fernando Valenzuela. He now has won three and lost four. Uh, tomorrow night, the same two teams will be at it. The Cubs are at the 500 mark now on this road trip. With Steve Stone, I'm Harry Carey. This Bud's for you. I want to say good morning to some of you and good night to the rest. Final score, the Cubs win it eight to three. So long, everybody.